Okay, this is going to be a short video on the project uh, debut carbon, and this is the One Expression Classic DC. Um, I'm going to talk about the the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, there's not too much ugly, but there is one, and we're going to get to that. But let's first start with the um, the dust cover. The hinges are they're kind of one of the bads. I wish there was a little bit better um, hinge system for the uh, project turntables, but they're staying with this style. Um, it makes easy lift off, but it's just kind of a, a cheesy way to do that. So that's the cover. The next is the slip mat, which is this cork mat and it's a really thin light cork mat it looks okay it's not very dense it has virtually no rubber in it maybe none at all and this thing collects static um, it'll lift off with your records um, it's a really kind of pain in the neck I don't like it and I replaced it with this tonar mat it's a good sturdy mat rubber cork uh, heavy it it does do some dampening and it stays in place with your records when you lift them off so again cork mat there is a it's kind of a bad it's not really ugly it's it works but not near as good as this tonar mat okay and going down to the platter this is one of the goods um, very heavy platter aluminum and it's damped on the inside here with this rubber so very nice it's almost too heavy for this motor and we're getting to that as well and that's kind of another this we're getting to the ugly part um, the motors on the carbons are not very good uh, they vibrate and hum like crazy and unless you do some work to it it will drive you crazy um, what I've got here the sub platter, and I'll try and lift this off so you can see it. It's coated with, I, I applied um, 3M uh, automotive body panel dampening material. It's adhesive on one side, and I cut a little paper pattern to fit, and then traced that onto the, um, the noise dampening material, stuck it to the bottom as well as the top. And this now makes this uh, sub platter really, uh, really dead. It, it doesn't make any noise at all. So, again, another bad, but you can turn that into a good with some cheap uh, sound deadening panel. And I think here in Canada, this 3M product cost me, it was under 20 bucks, and it's like a, a 19 by 19 sheet. You can do this a hundred times, it's great. Um, the uh, oh, going back to the um, the platter. If you've got a debut carbon that's got that steel platter, they're horrible. Um, they really need some damping material. I did see one fellow in the UK, I believe, do a similar thing to his debut, and that's a real smart idea. I would do that in a minute. Um, that will really help uh, resonance from, from that uh, subplatter. Now we're getting into the ugly. Um, for a long time, you, you'll be on forums and you'll hear people talking about the hum from their, from their debut carbon. Well, this here, I don't know if we can see it, I'll maybe move the camera a little closer. So the debut motor vibrates and buzzes like like crazy. Um, and I'm going to take the camera off the uh, mount here. So I'm just going to pause. Okay, so we're back here at the motor. I got the camera in the hand. So if I'm shaky, I apologize. So um, I've got this. Uh, it's just sticky tack. 
big gob here, as big as I could get on these uh, arms here. Um, these arms are where the screws go down, so-called transport screws, that had um, the Zorbethane pad under here and under here. And, and this is a big contentious issue um, out there. But uh, whether to keep that Zorbethane pad and the screw in there or not, um, I suggest you, you could try and play around with that tension and get it just right and maybe get it to work for a while, but it doesn't never seem to stay um, noise free. So what I've done is, it's hard to see, but I have obviously got these big balls of sticky tack here to help dampen the motor. Uh, I also took the motor out and wrapped, uh, wrapped uh, this sticky tack around the motor again to add weight to uh, dampen the motor. And then the big thing here, this is what everybody needs to do. <laughs> This is probably the best way to kill that vibration from the motor and that is these Zorbethane pads that I've put underneath the suspension o-ring and if you take those out you're gonna see that the motor falls down and these o-rings lay on the plinth and the vibration just just goes right through those rubber uh, that rubber suspension o-ring and into the plinth and it just vibrates like crazy and hums. You, you hear it as soon as you put the record, uh, the needle on the record. So, I've got a full one in the front, here and here, and then I cut half a pad and stuck it in at the back. Um, that was done so that you can keep this motor tilted up once you put the belt on, and it'll pull, it, pull the front down. So, this helps to level out your motor. Now because you raise this up with these pads, you may have to adjust your pulley height. I did a little bit, I got a little bit too close and it will rub the bottom of the platter. So make that adjustment. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take some of the uh, dampening material, that 3M dampening material, and I'm going to cut it and fit it to the top of this mounting uh, plate for the motor. And I'm hoping that that's going to help dampen that motor even more. So now, um, when I put a record on, you have to have it at a stupid loud volume to, to pick up that hum. And in fact, I'm actually hearing more uh, rumble now from the bearing at that really, really high level. So this trick here, that really helps. That's a game changer for the uh, project uh, debuts and these one expressions. So here's um, an example of uh, the Zorbethane pad that I bought. Just got them on eBay. I think it was a pack of 12, 15, 12, something like that. It was, uh, and again, it was about 20 bucks, 20, 24 dollars. It's a little bit of money to spend, but these work good. They are adhesive, um, which can be a problem in some cases, but uh, worked fine for me. Uh, I tried various things. You can see there's a hole in here. So I tried this under the motor mount screw in various ways, but I could not isolate uh, the vibration that way. So I had to use whole ones underneath the rubber O-ring here. So this, uh, and this is a, th a 30 um, Zorbethane pad, so it's a really soft one. Um, and the way you kind of figure out how, what, what you need is, is the really hard ones are for heavier weights. There's no weight on here. So I went with the softest Zorbethane pad that I could get and that seems to work really well. Okay, so that that's a must do. This this here will eliminate almost all of your uh, vibration problems. So I would suggest anybody uh, they should do that. Okay, so we're going to move on to some more other uh, and one more ugly here I think. And that is these power supplies. This is what ships with the debut carbon and the expression. Wall wart switching power supply. These things are crap. Um, it hums. You get it close to this. It's kind of neat to do. If you plug this in and then take the power, the tip, and just bring that close to the to the uh, cartridge. You would not believe the noise you, you get from that. 
and uh, when I was trying to sort this out, I actually took this uh, power supply to a um, electronic repair repair shop close to my home, and uh, the guy looked at it and he just said, "Oh yeah, that thing is noisy. It's crazy. It's just you know, it's junk." So he has a computer repair uh, place, and I asked him if he had any power supplies, and we checked this one. It's a Canon power supply. I'll see if we can get zoom in and see what it is. Uh, AC adapter. Uh, it says it's only 13 and a half volts. Um, with no load on it, it measured almost 18 volts uh, at one amp. And this works great. There is no noise from this. You can plug this into the wall, bring it up to the cartridge, and there's no noise. And um, if I could make another suggestion, th this is another one you want to do. There are other audiophile grade, so-called audiophile grade power supplies out there. Uh, in Canada here, I can't remember the model or the make, but they're about a hundred bucks at uh, the local audio shop in London. Um, if you can find one of these power supplies, it's, it's probably worth it. Um, this one cost me like five bucks. So, um, you know, go to the Goodwills and the value shops and, and see if you can find a power supply. It's, it's well worth it. I would recommend it. The other thing that works good is um, laptop power supplies. Um, they are very quiet. I, I tested those by bringing the tip up to the uh, cartridge. No hum. And that's kind of how I discovered how bad the, uh, the factory power supply was. Um, so that's, that's one thing that needs to be replaced as well. And then moving on to um, the supplied um, interconnect cable. Um, I mean, they look, they look great and, and they do work okay, but they don't do a really uh, good job of shielding from EMF and RMF. Um, and I found this out with the, L, uh, the LED lights in my kitchen. Um, I was getting a buzz um, in the turntable and I found that if I went to um, this style of interconnect which is actually an audio video cable um, made by Omega it says uh, platinum link on it uh, those connects uh, let's see if we can focus here those interconnects worked really well to cut that EMF and I was really happy with those and um, because the turntable was uh, a few feet away farther than uh, the regular short connects work, uh, they wouldn't work. So I had to move to this longer cable, which is about six feet. And, and they worked great. I was really happy with that. Um, since then, I've moved my table. And I'm a lot closer now. So I'm using these cables. Uh, these, I've had these for years. I bought these in the 80s um, and they are there. I don't know if we can get a picture down there. Probably won't be able to see it. But they are uh, kind of a semi-balanced cable, shielded. Um, they're called, they're by Ultralink and they're called Discovery. These are really good. Um, back in the day I had these hooked up through my preamp, my power amp, uh, my tape deck, um, everything. So these work really well and this is what I'm using right now the ends are really really nice they're tight uh, uh, gold plated and again um, just another one of those things that you can take a bad and, and turn it into a good just by changing those uh, interconnects out and and that's you know small thing but does make a difference I did have to make my own ground cable um, this was the first one I made I changed this up. I, I've actually crimped and soldered a new one, but I just didn't want to climb in behind uh, the uh, the amp and pull out the wires. So anyway, that's that. There is one other thing I'm going to talk to you about, and we'll see if we can get down here close enough to see it. And and that's the feet. Um, these feet, uh, I mean, they look nice. They're adjustable. Uh, they do a pretty good job of dampening. However you need to leave them tight. Um, if you don't leave them tightened up, they are loose and they rattle. So my advice on this would to be just leave them tight, 
use shims under them to to level the table and that's what I, I do down uh, in my listening room I have um, just cardboard shims with some some of this material here this uh, anti-slip material which is nice because this thing just slides around so with the shims underneath with uh, a little bit of this anti-skid stuff it works uh, it works really well so I would recommend uh, doing it that way using shims instead of adjusting the feet because uh, the loose um, the loose feet uh, rattle okay and then this is just a side note has nothing to do with the turntable but uh, it's the alignment uh, protractor that this was downloaded from uh, the vinyl engine and um, I just want to talk a little bit about alignment on these turntables because I've had I had an essential, uh, I bought a primary for my son and I also had a um, had the uh, debut carbon for two weeks but the noise drove me crazy and uh, anything that's got that 8.6 arm with the 200 millimeter uh, pivot distance spindle to pivot um, this is the line that I think is probably the best it gives you almost exactly the same overhang as what the factory recommends and I use the Lofgren B curve uh, with the DIN ratings for the um, the null points or the inner groove distance and the null points are at 67 and 114 thereabouts and that gives you the overhang of 18.5 which is in the manual uh, in the manuals that are listed correct there are some manuals out there that are listed as a 22 millimeter overhang and that's incorrect so that there is the best alignment for these turntables and another tip here is if you look at my cartridge it is slid right out to the end and if you've got any 2M cartridge and the OM cartridges that position tracks that arc perfectly there's no messing around or trying to screw around with it just slide it out to the end and you're going to be so close um, it's not funny so those are those are some of the recommendations that I would make uh, on this turntable and um, this turntable I bought used I bought it for half the price of a new one and I knew going in about all of the problems that it was going to have but I figured I could probably uh, make this thing into a really good turntable and it is a really good turntable and I would I would advise anybody that if they're looking for a turntable in that five to six hundred dollar range look for a used one of these in good condition um, and and put these uh, tips into practice and you, you will be amazed it is a very good turntable it works very nicely it's got a great arm and uh, you could do a lot worse so if you're out there looking for a turntable maybe pick one of these up try the tips here uh, that I've shown you today and uh, yeah I think you'll like it now this is this video was kind of in response to um, Carl Langer's um, last two videos that I saw on his project and new uh, um, new turntable that he's purchased and also one that Bill at Bill Bo Bill's Box of Sound did Oh, a few months ago, maybe even a year now, where he talks about how to um, uh, get your get the noise level down in your uh, project uh, debut carbon, and so these are kinds of the things that I do. Um, uh, there's a couple things that Bill suggests, and uh, I agree with them. You got to play this with the uh, the cover off, and uh, add these little tips, and you'll be you'll be really happy that you did. Anyway. Uh, have a good one, guys, and uh, as they say over in 33 and a third, keep on spinning.